I want to speak to specifically the uh, the movie spec hype because you know we talked a little bit about and, and Mickey, uh, you said yourself sometimes it's tough to tell when a new book comes out. Or, oh, is, are they caring because it's a new character and they want to just collect him in the comics, or do they think he's gonna show up in a, in a movie? But then you got DC that you know doesn't have that push that Marvel has had over the last decade plus. So you get characters like. Punchline, who was very, you know, successful in terms of, of the hype. I don't think people were sitting there, oh, Punchline's going to show up in a movie. You know, it was more like, well, here's a character that's tied into one of the greatest villains of all time and, and so forth. So I want to ask you guys, though, um, and, and Ryan, I'll, I'll let you answer first here. Um, when it comes to movie spec, and looking back for me, and, you know, I don't think many of us were on YouTube as much back then or, you know, like when in the early days of the MCU, you know, 2008, 2012 with the Avengers, you know, there there wasn't as much there. You know, the key collector app didn't exist where, you know, you have this database that gave you instantaneous information. So uh, we definitely were fed information differently, but I don't... I, I don't really recall it being as, as crazy back then, but I'm I'm thinking that a big thing that really brought this movie hype spec in was the first time that we saw Thanos in the end credit scene and in, in, in the uh, Avengers, the first. Yeah, and, and if you if you actually go back and look at prices from when that happened, you you did see like a, a jump, right. and then. It, it was level for a little bit. Then you saw another jump and level for a bit. And you saw another jump. And that one, uh, I actually looked at that one relatively recently because I was curious about how where it stands now versus where it was. Now, the, the whole uh, uh, Eros thing kind of threw that into, threw a loop, yeah. you know, a wrench into that a bit because it added another bit of spec to yeah. that, you know, Iron Man 55. Um, but uh, but even, even that book, that was one that I, 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 I've talked about where even that book, which is, I mean, it's one of my, Thanos is one of my favorite characters when I was was a kid because I I grew up uh, with the Infinity Gauntlet storyline and everything and um, uh, even that book was not immune to drops in prices once he was killed you know in the movies right. like right. Uh, it it fell I mean almost I think about almost in half uh, maybe not quite that much but pretty close and that's a pretty big key issue you know and, and I just so want to say real quick sorry to cut you off Marvel okay. Goddess thank you so much for for the super chat. Truly appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, with respect to, to movie spec, you know, that kind of stuff, I don't think any book is really immune to it. You know, well, once that once that character is used up. Uh, yeah. the, well, let me ask you, drop. I just I want to because I want to tr try to steer your, your thoughts specifically to do you feel I mean, outside of how it really well, I mean, I don't know if you can put it outside of how it affects books because it's obviously uh, correlated specifically to this, but I mean, do you feel looking at, you know, the trajectory of how these books have done on the market as the MCU has grown and, and everything, I mean, are we at this a crazy point right now where we put so much, and, and let me give you a little bit of context of where I'm coming from. I've always said, like, I think it's so great that, you know, cause there's a lot of people out there that say, well, you're going to let, you know, somebody showing up in a movie and it's going to, change what you want to pay for a book like or or affect what you're going to pay for a book that's crazy absolutely i will <laughs> yeah yeah it will, it will. Yeah. and i always say it's like it's you know we as collectors that grew up with these characters as kids and we're seeing them in these movies it just it adds on to the to the the whole experience of, of how we experience these these characters and we're always gonna just like we're always gonna have the comics we're always gonna have the movies and i think it drives our love for these characters and that's why essentially it takes us back to the comics and and you can really understand it when you get into seeing really bigger characters even bigger villains like thanos um or when we saw uh you know uh, black panther on on screen for the first time um but do, do you feel that that mentality of, oh, well, they're now they're, they're showing up. You know, it could be oh, Pace Pot Pete is going to be in the next. I hope, oh, oh man, I hope so. <laughs> like, do you see what I'm saying? So what are your thoughts on that? Are we at this level? And again, this goes back to FOMO. Like, are we just are we now blindly like, oh, 
they're in a movie or, you know, they're in the MCU, and then I need, 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 need. Well, well, part of it, though, too, is that it's it's not just that for, like, for me personally that it's um, that, oh, they're in that movie. Now I, I'm willing to pay more for it. It's that when when a character shows up in something that's more uh, widely culturally available, you it, you bring in new people that have an interest, and and it does. And and there's only so many of these books out there. I mean, that's the thing. Like with a lot of these, there's only so many of these books out there. And if you have an entity like Disney that has a huge reach, and you have like Black Panther making, I don't know if it crossed the billion dollar mark, but close to it. You, you know, and and having worldwide hundreds of millions, if not billions of people seeing that movie, it only takes a very, very, very small percentage of those people to go like, hey, maybe it would be cool to own that book, you know, and, and now yeah. that that starts moving up. It's another person that is now interested that is contributing to the the demand side of, of that equation. And so, yeah, be, being in being a more, you know, culturally relevant character, it, it does have an impact. And yeah. it's uh it's hard. To, it's. I think it's difficult to say it doesn't. For sure. And to that point, it's like I, I always say, you know, a, a book is as valuable as it is relevant to pop culture, right? So, like, when you have AF fifteen, it's valuable because it's all Spider Man's always going to be in a movie. He's always going to have a cartoon. He's always going to be on pajama pants. Like, he's <laughs> always going to be relevant in that sense. So that's why that book is always going to be valuable. Whereas, like, Infinity Gauntlet one, you know, is going to be as relevant as it is, you know the movie that is there but like like of course these movies affect our perception and and how we want to desire certain comic books i mean like we we all only can have so much emotional investment into a character that we read in a comic book and so sometimes it takes a movie for me to be like oh i i never knew really like what that character was like or i didn't know you know like that's kind of what they stood for and now i really like them you know it's like I didn't know who Vigilante was, but I watched Peacemaker. I'm like, this character is dope. I might go pick up, a, <laughs> you, know, you know, I might go pick up a, 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 you know, an annual number two. Like, you know, that's how it, and, and it's like, it's not FOMO. It's just that it's like, I just yep. didn't know anything about the character. Yep. And I, and it took some pop culture show to introduce yep. me to him because I wasn't going to put in the effort to read him myself. Um, and also like, I, I, like even movie spec aside, I mean, like how many collectors do you know that the reason they like X-Men is because of the animated cartoon? I was like I literally was, like 95% of yes. everyone who is our age who is like, oh, yes. X-Men is my favorite. That's it's why like, I buy Avengers because, Annual 10. Yeah, yeah it's because you <laughs> because you watch the cartoon. It's not necessarily let, because you just read the comic books. Let, yeah. let, me, let me add to that uh, because you touched, I was, I was going to say this for when you wrapped up and I was going to add this, but because you brought that up, I was just thinking like, it, I, I, we know Batman's, well, you know, been around um, for, you know, 80 plus years um, and every generation has grew up with them in some form or fashion. But the Batman, the animated series, when I totally. read when I read Batman, I hear Kevin Conroy's voice. And yeah. sure, maybe I would have been a Batman fan if that show never happened. But it added so much to me and it it it, it you know, it carried over in into the comic book. So I'm, I'm just I wanted to say yeah. that because I, I'm just glad you brought up the, the X-Men animated too because I think it's that very same thing. And I, I think that's why people connected like Batman Adventures 12 so much. It's like that's the Harley Quinn right, right, that yeah. a lot of like us picture when we think of Harley Quinn. Right, it's like right. that, the, the animated you know version of Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah. And and I think to, back to your point, um, Ryan, when you were mentioning the, the Thanos book and like how it had its dip and stuff. And it's like, and for sure, all books I think are always going to have their dips and corrections. But like one thing that I think is interesting too, at least in terms of like the future outlook of the market is it's like, remember the MCU was honestly a huge experiment and they hit a grand slam. Yep. And and they hit, it, they hit it out of the park so far that this is a brand that is as important to Disney as Star Wars is. And like, you know, like, it, it, things are different now, I think. Now on the other end of Endgame and Infinity War, because it's like, even if this, you know, whatever, the next phase, let's say it's just not that good or it's not as cool or whatever, like Disney's not going to abandon this or they're going to like, 
whatever, retool it and revamp it. And they're going to launch it again with like new, you know, cap and new Iron Man. And so like, this is a property that they're like, they're like, we, we can keep this going for like 50 years. Like there's no reason yep. that they can't do exactly what they're doing in the comic books with it. And that's probably how they see it. And so I think that when you talk about like the phase of, of the, the first infinity saga and what comic books did at that time, you know, I, I think like, just still people were unsure, you know, was, like, is this something that's really worth it? I think that that now it's kind of like, oh, okay, like, this is going to go on for a long time. So my like emotional and financial investment into this thing, I mean, nobody really knows what's going to happen, but my but but presumably has like a future with it. So I mean, that, that's something that I, I do consider when I'm when I am thinking about the books I've, I've bought. I mean, I definitely I buy books that aren't just related to what Disney and Marvel has, you know, I've got right. My DC books up there. I've let pre-code horror books I like to buy, that kind of stuff. But like I do like the fact that there is this behemoth of Disney, you know, pushing comics. You know, it, it yeah. does give you a little more faith in the longevity of that of, of that uh market or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, because Disney I, they know how to make money. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> so and, and, they know and how that's to the reason. Up. Sorry, sorry. And then okay. that's the reason why the DC books just haven't quite caught on yet. Because people yep. don't yet believe that my investment into this thing is going to be, you know, persistent. Like, but, you know, we're going to get Peacemaker season two. And it seems like James Gunn's doing good stuff there. And it's like, oh, and now, oh, spoilers, but like. Oh, okay, oh, we'll oh I haven't seen oh, 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 Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, but, but like, you know, I might buy a Peacemaker book because it feels like we're going to get more Peacemaker. I want to I want to add though you know and I always say this DC books especially when you look at keys you know especially copper and in in older they continue to increase in value which goes to show and I'm watching the chat and there's a lot of people like you know that maybe you guys are stuck in your ways maybe you know you like how it was 30 years ago and that's fine maybe you don't you think Disney owning Marvel has watered it in whatever the case may be maybe you don't like any of this overlapping when it comes to movies and comics but guess what at the end of the day comic books are still a very feasible and 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 collectible asset because even if we didn't have movie hype these books continue to increase in value as a long-term investment slash collectible so uh, i just want to throw that in there to to say that you know we're not we're not sitting here saying that oh comic books have to have movies or have to have disney or you know that's not what we're saying but we are where we're at right now and if you are somebody that doesn't care about the movies and or, or the tv shows the comic books are going nowhere you know the books that were printed at 12 cents are still there for you to go and collect and enjoy the comic books that were printed at 30 cents are still there for you to collect and enjoy and regardless of what other people say some new comic books might be trash there's a lot of good stuff out there too. So just enjoy comics how you want to enjoy it. If all this other stuff is just noise to you guys, but don't bash other people for understanding the positives and, and seeing what's going on right now. And I think this is a good way to sum up this piece of the show because we got into this talking about FOMO and how, you know, it could be worrisome and, and we can have concerns to, to way that we're just, you know, people can get burnt. It, is it becoming an addiction? But then we talked, we covered such ground and came to all these different positive, positive factors that are out there right now to where we are really able to enjoy these characters and enjoy these properties on a level that I think we as kids probably couldn't, would have never imagined. And it really is getting to so many more people, including this younger generation. And I could see that with my kids. And I'm sorry, at the end of the day, that is a beautiful thing. And that absolutely makes me happy.